Okay. All right. Hey, my Legion. How y'all doing today? We're back with another new review, and this is one from the past I'd never seen before until today. Called Lords of Flatbush, one of Sylvester Stallone's early movies from 1974. Well, actually, not just Stallone, but Henry Winkler. Yep, Henry Winkler and Perry, and Perry King. King, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've always heard about it. I heard it's good. You know, uh, worth checking out. But yeah, just, uh, you know, through. There back then, the three of them were nobodies, and then yeah. they all became stars. I know. I think, I don't know when Svestalone did that adult film or something like that. But I remember one of his first movies, he was in that Woody Allen movie called Bananas. Oh, this was, he was only on for like, like a minute, but he played like a hood like he does in this one. It's like a right. motorcycle gang. And they're all supposed to be high school kids, you know, they all look like they're in their 30s. But I mean, that's how it goes sometimes. And it's like a slice of life. It doesn't really have... It just exists. It's just like their daily lives yeah, and stuff like that. Story. Yeah, but I mean, it was entertaining for what it was. Very low budget. It's like a short story. You know, yeah. short story's kind of like a slice of a bigger little story sometimes. Yeah, I, I like I mean, it was a fun movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the soundtrack made yeah. me think of... I mean, yeah, it's low budget, but the soundtrack was kind of... Made me think of the type of soundtracks that South Park... Makes fun of it. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, it was like oh, very generic, very generic soundtrack. I mean, yeah. I think. Well, shit. Let me. I'm, um, but I remember probably one of the worst songs. I remember, you know, I try and do like a fifties type thing. I mean, they were like cheesy yeah. fifty. I mean, generic fifty songs. Probably one of the worst things I remember. There was a movie called Frozen Scream, <laughs> and they were supposed to have a like a flashback to the fifties, right? It was a horror, low budget horror film, and you know the song "Rock Around the Clock." Yeah. But they they had a song called "Let's Jack Around a Shack." <laughs> yeah, that was so stupid. I had to laugh at that. It was such a low budget horror film. I mean, it was on one of those um, Continental Video used to do these um, double features, and they had they had a great one with the Slayer and uh, Scalps. Right. But I heard that they were both seventy five minutes. I heard they edited those down to make it fit into a, like a very convenient um, right. thing. But I mean, I don't know why they just have you know they still have more. Time to really yeah, this is only 85 minutes long. Yeah, this is 85 minutes. A short one. I really yeah. liked it. Yeah, I liked it. And we're talking about it's kind of, uh, you know, Sylvester. So, uh, Sylvester. <laughs> yeah, Sylvester. <laughs> I can't say Sylvester, George. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, uh, uh, his girlfriend wants him to buy an engagement ring that's $1,600. Yeah. Now, that's supposed to be back in the 50s, even the 70s. I would think that'd be. Yeah, expensive. it's outrageous. So I looked up, you know, the average salary in the fifties was like yearly. It was three thousand three hundred. I know. And then today's money, that ring would be almost twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, so that's like, outrageous. Yeah, she's being a real. Uh, well, she said, "I want that ring. I want that ring." Yeah, it's like sixteen hundred dollars. He didn't even have a job. He, he's though. a high, he's supposed to be a high school kid. Yeah. We don't, well, we don't know if he has a job. He never yeah. seemed to work. Yeah. So it doesn't seem like they have a job. Yeah, they just hang around like the yeah, but then malt again, shop you know, and they might never show them yeah. working. But I'm like, uh, that's expensive. Yeah, so, I, I mean, mean I don't know, too. like, if you compare it to nowadays, I don't know any kids that you know, four to twenty thousand. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, just so like certain things like that. I'm like, yeah. really? I mean, she just said, man, that's a lot of money. Even like. You know, I know she really wanted to ring by me. It's a lot of money. I'm not being, you know, it's, uh, it's just outrageous. I think a lot of people would agree. That's a lot. Yeah, and, and the 50, I mean, I don't know. Today, by today's 16, is still a lot of money. Well, I mean, everything's going up in price, right. but boy. And then maybe it's just one of those types of jewelers. You could have gone to another jeweler right. and say, well, may I check on another uh, jeweler or something like that. Well, con game anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're overpriced. Yeah. You know. They're not as rare as they make them seem. Like. Yeah, but I mean, that was really a rate. If it, I mean, you know, even if it was a real diamond, it could, he could have done a scam or something. I don't know. Right. But $1,600 back in the 50s, that's <laughs> pretty outrageous. You know, and this was back in, in Bro uh, look at Brooklyn Life. I don't know whenever Happy they started around the same time. I think they, they, the fond was based around him, I guess, you know. Well, and, like, yeah, that's a so Jason looked up a little bit of the trivia. Yeah. And, uh, Winkler did not base the Fonz on his own character, but yeah. on Stallone's character. Yeah. And it's, that's funny, uh, uh, saw that also when they were trying, Stallone was trying to get Rocky made. Yeah. So people showed, like, the investors, 
this movie to show who he was. Well, they got all excited, but they thought he was Perry King. Yeah, Perry King, yeah. And then, like, uh, when he found out that which one Stallone was, the excitement yeah. kind of died down. But yeah. this, you know, he still ended up getting financed. Yeah. I, but, but yeah, I mean, so I think. It's kind of interesting. I can't remember if he, had, he must have had a. Tough time. I don't know if he had a tough time shopping Rocky around. He might have. Yeah. But I know George Lucas had a tough, hell of a time. Well, he had some. George Lucas had some big hits like American Graffiti behind him, right? Right. And he had a tough time selling you Star Wars. Well, yeah, it was such a different thing to yeah. do, like space fantasy. Yeah. Well, I mean, he had that THX 1138 based well, off his college film. Well, no, but I mean, he did a bigger body with Robert right. Duvall, and that was a big flop, yeah, but it's a good true. movie. Yeah. I never saw the student film though. The right. student film was like 40 Yeah, I started out student film and yeah. he made a bigger budget, but still, yeah. You know, I mean, I think, and the story goes like he uh, he was shopping all over the place. He didn't get anywhere. He went to the guy from Fox, 20th Century Fox, and he said he challenged him to a poker game. Yeah, I don't think that. I don't think that that's true. Oh, not the poke game's not true. That's what I always heard. I don't. I read it in a book or something. I don't like, know if oh. that's true. Now you have to watch. They had an interview George Lucas oh, okay. and uh, Robert Redford. Oh, okay. I don't remember him saying there was a poker game. Well, they said like the the head of Fog. He said he challenged a poke game. If I win. Well, that's like this one yeah. guy always told me. Yeah. Oh, you know about some other stuff like that. It was never true. Oh. I don't know if that's ever oh. true because I don't remember him saying that. Because they talked about, you know, they interviewed both yeah. Lucas and Redford about being two independent uh, filmmakers, how they get to yeah. start. Uh, yeah. And what he did was he waived his director's fee. Oh, okay. That's how he got it made. Oh, okay. Because uh, he wanted to direct it. And uh, that, that's one of the reasons why it's so difficult. And, uh, <clears throat> but then he wanted the merchandising right. And back then, merchandising... Yeah. That was nothing. Yeah. Merchandising? But, What's that? Merchandising? Yeah, yeah. I mean, no one yeah. did really merchandising back then. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Keep the merchandising. Yeah. Well, yeah, that and was... He, a, got, he kind of... Well, and I think it was in that uh, The Toys That Made Us he talked about. Yeah. The original deal wasn't that, that for the merchandising wasn't that great of a deal on Lucas's end. Yeah. And the toy company made a ton of money. Yeah. So when it came time to renew, then he put the screws to them yeah. and so where he got the better yeah. end of the deal yeah. than the toy manufacturer. Yeah. Well, like I said, I remember reviewing it before the Toys and Made there was a movie called Plastic Plastic Galaxy. Yeah. About the Star Wars and the Kenner movement and stuff like the action figures. I saw that. I reviewed that along with uh, some type of ketchup. And the director of that movie commented on my on my video nice. and said, uh, the, "Thank you for reviewing the movie." Also, that ketchup looks pretty good too. With like some, I don't know, some catch from Iron Chef or something. Yeah, like that. see, I never heard about the poker thing. You're the only person I ever heard of from, and all these. I movies, read it in a book. I, I read it in a book. Never heard that. No. Well, I read it in a book. He challenged a guy to a poker game and said, "Like, if I if you win, uh, I'll you don't have to make or something like that." If, I win, you you guys have to yeah, find it all stuff like that. I can't. Remember. I read it back when I was. Yeah. I bought it from. I bought it at Golden yeah, Dawn. I've never heard yeah. of that. But I mean, that's why I was. I read in the book. So. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it's a neat story. You waived his yeah. director's fee. Yeah. You know, you don't have to pay me. Yeah. Well, it was a neat story anyway. So I mean, I don't know. That's why I was. Could be true, that. but I yeah, I've never heard that. Oh uh, well. For I'm any Star Wars person. <laughs> Yeah, oh well. Yeah, it's cool, so cool. I buy like the one movie. guy. Yeah, what I was gonna say, I forgot what I was talking about. Uh, one guy I used to work with, he said, "Yeah, uh, uh, one of the Rudies always puts the Steelers up and backs them in a poker hand, yeah. the ownership. So yeah, they can lose the Steelers. No, because he's only one owner. <laughs> There's several Rudies and other people that own the Steelers. Yeah. So he can lose his ownership if he actually did that, which." Probably isn't true. Yeah. But you know, it wouldn't be someone else owns the Steelers. They just own his shares because it's like several Rudies. <laughs> either cut well, their cousins had to sell, like some of his cousins, their cousins had to sell part of their ownership because they want to open up casinos, and they couldn't do both: be yeah. a owner of NFL team and own casinos in PA, at least. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, that was always a sketchy story. Yeah. But then he was one of these guys that believes some conspiracy stuff too. Yeah, yeah, I don't believe in that conspiracy bullshit. So. 
But I mean, that's a review of uh, Lord of the Flatbush. I think I gave it an 8 out of 10. Yeah. I liked the movie. It was pretty good. So until next time, I please out. Take care of my legion. Like and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. Okay.